What is inside God's word that heals? What makes it the balm in Gilead? What makes it the solution for man's health situation? What is in the word that heals? Number one, the word is medicinal. Say we be medicinal. Come on, say louder medicinal. The word is medicinal. The Bible makes us understand in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22. It says there, my son, attend to my words. Incline your ears to my sins. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He said, for they are health unto those that find, life unto those that find them, and they are health unto all their flesh. That word health in verse 22 means medicine. They are medicine to all their flesh. What that means is that the assimilation of God's word is an introduction of a spiritual medication to man's body. When you are ingesting the word, you are taking spiritual tablets. And the tablet of the word resolves every situation in the health of man without a side effect. That is the potency of God's word. It is the carrier of heaven's medication. The carrier of heaven's medication. So the word of God is the container of heaven's medicine for your body. Just like a syringe contains medication for the body. When it is injected into the body and it is pushed into the body, medicine enters the body in the same vein. When the word of God is injected into your spirit and pushed into your spirit, medicine enters into your body. That means that somebody is hearing me right now. The medicine of heaven is entering your body. If you believe it, say louder, amen. I said, if you believe me, say it louder, amen. amen. It enters your body to instantly address the situation. It is an all-purpose medication. It enters into your body and begins to address whatever situation has been afflicting you. I pray again today, this morning, that no matter what that situation may be, as the medication of the word of God enters into your system, I see your body right now being perfected in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say it louder, amen. amen. God's servant shared again in the first service the testimony of how he met somebody some years ago who was challenged and afflicted in the body. And he told her, he said, sit down, I'm going to give you right now three tablets. And she was wondering what kind of tablet is he talking about? And he gave her three scriptures. And as she took those tablets, the satanic oppression that had been tormenting her was instantly subdued. She said every time she would sleep, there would be a force that would come and bounce on her. And she would be struggling and struggling. He said, but the next time, after partaking of the three tablets, the force came again. But this time, the force was suspended. Could not land on her. Why? Injection has already taken place. The body was no longer tormentable. So with the word that was now inside her system, she instantly engaged dominion and commanded that force to leave. Not only did it get suspended, but it got checked out of the entire environment. And that was the end of affliction. That was the end of oppression. This morning, by the word of the Lord that is entering into your body, entering into your system right now, Whatever has been tormenting you before now is subdued in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say the loudest, amen. I said whatever has been tormenting your body, whatever has been agitating in your system, whatever has been, you know, afflicting you by the authority of the word of the Lord today, I see that force subdued in the name of Jesus. So the word of God is medicine. The word of God is medicine. It is there to correct and, and recalibrate your system. That's what God's word does. It goes there to correct whatever has been there that has been, you know, causing disruption in your system. I remember the testimony of, of, of a particular man. He was told by the doctor that you have a terminal condition. It means that he was going to die. And they had told him that he had very few days to live. So he went back into his room, took up his Bible, and began to consume the Bible aggressively. 
He began to study the scriptures. Everything he could find on healing. He was digesting chapters and chapters of the Bible. By the time he came out after one week, they checked him again. Every trace of that terminal disease had been terminated. Why? His body had been medicated. Medicated by the word. Many of us are used to Panadol, aspirin, various kinds of medication. But God is saying, get on a word medication. It will recalibrate your body and get you beyond the place of affliction. I see each one of us from this day onward entering into a realm where no affliction will be traceable to you again. <laughs> Number two, the word of God is surgical. It is surgical. It is surgical. Now, I'd like you to listen to this very closely. The first surgery performed on the earth was not performed by man. God is the original surgeon. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. The Bible tells us there very clearly. It says, and the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. That looks like anesthesia. It says, and he slept and he took one of his ribs. That's the surgical procedure taking place. And close up the flesh instead thereof. And the Bible says, out of that rib that the Lord had taken, he made a woman and brought her unto the man. God caused a deep sleep to fall. God opened the man up. God took out the rib. God closed the flesh. There was no trace of stitch on the body. Now, the question we must ask ourselves is that if God is a surgeon, a master surgeon like this, then the question is, how does he perform the surgery? How does he perform the surgery? Do I need to go right now and look for a particular hospital and say, look, I'm looking for your pretty room. I want to lie down so God can operate me there. How does he perform his own surgery? And the answer is simple. The surgeries of heaven are performed by the word of God. How do we say so? Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. He said the word of God is quick. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joint and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. What does that mean? Listen to this very carefully. The word of God has the ability to reach the deepest part of man. There is no part deeper than the marrow. When you cut the flesh, you reach the bone. When you cut the bone, you reach the marrow. There's nothing after the marrow. And he said that this surgeon scalpel has the ability to reach even to the bone and the marrow. That means there is no part of your body that cannot be operated on by the word. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? There is no part. There is no part of your body that cannot be operated on by the word. So the word of God is God's surgical tool through which he performs surgeries on our system. I pray for somebody here today that by the word of the Lord today, whatever it is that needs heaven's surgical intervention, I see that surgeon scalpel reaching out to you right now. If you believe it, say louder, amen. amen. I said, if you believe it, say louder, amen. amen. If you believe it, say the loudest, amen. amen. So God performs surgery by his word. When God's word is going forth, surgeries are taking place. He begins to perform surgeries by his word. Many of us remember the testimony of one of us who stood on this altar and said that in 2007, he was attacked by armed robbers and shot at close range. And as a result of that, he had a surgery that took place on his elbow. And he had been in pain and discomfort. And he had gone out serving God. And he said, suddenly the Lord spoke to him, my son, go and lie down. I want to perform a surgery on you. And he went and slept. 
by the time he woke up, the implant they had put inside of his elbow was beside him on the bed. No blood, no water, no stitch location. But the word God spoke had performed a surgery on that elbow and removed the implant. Now, the implant is what is supposed to help the elbow to be functioning. But when God operates, he doesn't need any artificial implant to make it work. So implant was out, but elbow was still working. Why? Because the master surgeon had taken charge of the situation. For somebody hearing my voice right now, whatever requires that surgeon's intervention, by the word of the Lord you are hearing right now, I see that surgery instantly executed. If you believe it, say louder, amen. Some years ago, I was privileged to be teaching in one of our services, and there was a particular brother who had had an accident. And as a result of that accident, his neck vertebrae was fractured. And as a result, he had been in pain for about nine years. He had to keep wearing a neck collar and a neck brace everywhere that he went. He couldn't sleep without that neck brace in place. He couldn't drive without that neck brace in place. He couldn't sit in the office without that neck brace in place. But suddenly he came to that service. And this particular subject, the surgical power of the word, was being taught that day. And as he heard the word instantly, the word performed a surgery on his fractured neck. The vertebrae was repaired and for the first time in nine years, the pain that he had been carrying instantly disappeared. He went to sleep, no pain. Sat down, no pain. Driving, no pain. The master surgeon had taken over the matter. Now listen, it doesn't matter how long your case may have been, but today, the master surgeon is taking over your matter. One of us shared a testimony in the, in the first service this morning. And she said that she had a particular growth that she had performed surgery on twice, but came to AAC. They just concluded AAC. And right in the service, as the word of God was going on, she looked, lo and behold, the surgery had taken place. The growth that was there has been removed. What man could not remove first time, second time, the master surgeon removed in a moment. Now hear this. Whatever men have failed at concerning your health, the master surgeon is taking charge to perfect it right now. If you believe it, say louder, amen. Alright, that was a very powerful video there by Pastor David Oedipo Jr. You are welcome to the commentary section of this video and as usual we always try to give you amazing gospel content on this channel um today's video is all about um the uh, pastor david Jr. talking about healing and how god healed this woman um, of certain uh, illness look at the diverse testimonies he gave you this in this video one thing I want us to understand is that God is always ready to heal us if we are ready to call unto Him. Now, this might sound tricky. A lot of persons might have prayed unto God and it feels like as if God is not ready to answer. But we need to understand that our faith is just like uh, the, the channel in which our healing um, can come through to us. I especially want to pray for somebody listening to this commentary today that if you are trusting God for your healing, may the Lord grant it unto you speedily in the name of Jesus. So no matter the torment, no matter the torture, no matter what the devil has been doing in your life, don't relent. God is in control and he will see you through, you overcome. It is very certain. One thing you just need to do is just keep serving God, keep trusting God, and keep declaring His word. Keep declaring His word. Look at that powerful testimony where that implant was removed from that guy, that man, after he went about serving the Lord, going about for souls. Now, we're not trying to make this as a traditional gospel, no. It is just the way the gospel is. You go for God, God goes for you. 
you recognize God, He recognizes you. If you want to be recognized, you have to show forth. So this is how the things work. You can't expect to be I you can't be idle and expect a miracle. Miracle does not come by you. Staying idle. May the Lord grant us understanding in the name of Jesus. Alright, please don't forget to like this video, comment, share if you are blessed. And have a great time. God bless you.